So today we are really starting development two. If you were here on Friday, I was teaching Friday. I told you I was, and I lived up to it. Isn't that exciting? I know we all really enjoyed it, because I did. <laughs> all right, so on your whiteboard, here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me if I touch a baby's feet and their feet start moving, what reflex is being triggered? On a baby, if I touch their feet, what reflex? Hannah Babinski. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Um, when the baby is searching for the nipple, what reflex is that? Good. Payton. Rooting. On your whiteboard, please tell me what reflex makes the baby look bigger to ward off any scary things. Babies are so intimidating. What are they? Annie? Moro. All right, so I have a lot of video clips I'm going to be showing you today. It will help concrete a couple things, uh, especially for our PJ. I'm going to cover some old stuff that I covered on Friday to show you a video clip. I'm going to go through the stuff I covered quickly so we can move forward, but it's important that you understand. On your focus, there's a chart that is labeled cognitive development. PJ's four stages of cognitive development. The stage is the name. Did I get here? Kind of? Okay, so the first stage of PJ's is sensory motor. So in this stage, write sensory motor. Okay, the age range I'm going to show you when we get to the video clip, so just leave it blank. And then you're going to write this. Did we not get here? Clearly not. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. We're going to be fine. All right, here we go. So the first stage of PJ's cognitive development is... Um, sensory motor stage. This is when an infant uses its senses and motor abilities to interact with objects in the environment. The conflict, or your major vocabulary terms and definitions, the major thing that's happening in a sensory motor stage is struggling with object permanence. So in the box next to it, write struggling with object permanence. Right in the box, it says major vocab terms. You're going to write struggling with object permanence. Object permanence is the knowledge that an item exists when it's not in sight. Okay? Babies struggle with this. They believe that if they can't see you, you've essentially died and you're never coming back. That you have fallen into a pit and you will never come back. Which is why when you leave a baby, what do they do? They cry because they think you're going to die, that you are dead and you are never coming back. Okay, that's object permanence. If they can't see something, they think it doesn't exist. What game do we play a lot with little babies? Peekaboo. Peekaboo Peek is them struggling with object permanence. When I go, when I cover my face, they think I'm gone and that I no longer exist. When I show them my face, they're like, oh my God, you're still there. And oh, you're gone. Oh my God, you're still there. Oh, you're gone. Oh my God. That is how dumb babies are. I'm just kidding. But that's object permanence. During sensory motor stage, they are struggling with object permanence, which means they do not master it, which means they think when I cover my face, I'm gone. When I show them my face, I'm here. Does that make sense? So on your study guide next to sensory motor in your application, I would say peekaboo for your application. Peekaboo is a perfect example of object permanence. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Okay, so this was birth to about two years old. So birth and your age range, you're going to write birth to age two. New babies aren't quite sure what happens to objects when they leave their sight. Sky's mom keeps disappearing and reappearing. No wonder peekaboo is so much fun. During their first year, however, infants will learn an important concept, object permanence. Everything has a life of its own, even if it is out of sight. At Maya's age, babies know to look for the object. 
but they might not have everything else straight. Ten-month-old Simon is about to make a classic mistake. Although he watched us place the toy plane under the white cloth, he'll look for it where he last found it, not where he watched us hide it. Okay, so in this example, and they go through it really, really quickly, they do a better job on all the other stages. This one, they don't do a great job. Okay, so there's two blankets, a white one and a green one. They put the toy underneath the white one, but the man goes for the green one. Why does he go for the green one? You can raise your hand and tell me why he went for the green one. Noah. That's where it was lost. That's where it was lost at last. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a cold in case you couldn't tell. Um, okay, so he goes for the place where he got it last. So that means, does he believe what he sees or does he believe what he last experienced? What he last experienced. He had success going under the green, so where does he go? The green. However, he watches it being placed under the white. So does he believe his eyes? No, he believes in experiences. That's part of the issue with object permanence. Object permanence is that if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Everyone's clear on sensory motor. On your test, 30% of your test on Thursday <coughs> is on PJ. If you don't understand PJ, don't show up on Thursday. On your AP exam, I guarantee there'll be three to five questions on PJ. It's a huge concept, it's a huge part, and you need to know the orders for both your test on Thursday and for the AP exam. You need to know them. They're all over this stuff. All right, so your next stage is your uh, pre-operational. Now, pre-operational is going to be the largest and most dense stage of content. It's not the longest stage, like as in years. It has the most stuff going on and has a lot of things to deal with. So the pre-operational stage is when cognitive development of a preschool child learns to use language as a means of exploring the world. They're able to say what they're thinking, and they're able to use it. So, the first thing that you need to understand is egocentrism. I would fill this out on your study guide, and I would just write egocentrism in the vocab box on your focus. Egocentrism is the inability to see the world through anyone else's eyes. <clears throat> So we used to work at Outback. And they used to have to sing the happy birthday song. Happy, happy birthday from the Outback crew. We wish it was a birthday so we can party too. Hey! I used to sing that every single night, and it kills your soul every time you sing it, like a little piece of ass. But anyway, one year I was working on my birthday, my birthday, and a little kid's birthday. He was four, because he kept telling me. Anyway. So I go up and I sing, and the most important thing that you can do when you wait tables is that you need to make a connection with your customer because if they like think of you not as like some random server, but as like, hey, I'm Sam, welcome to Outback, gonna take your, order. you know, if you like have a conversation, they're gonna tip you more. Okay, so you gotta kind of like work your way in. How are you guys doing? Have a conversation so they tip you more. So anyway. The kid was turning four. After I sang a stupid song to kind of work <coughs> my tip here, I started saying, oh, well, guess what? It's my birthday. And he's like, it's my birthday. And I was like, I know. It's your birthday and my birthday. And he's like, I'm four. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. I am whatever. And he's like, but I'm four. And I was like, that's great. It's my birthday, too. I love chocolate cake. And the kid didn't give a crap about me. The kid could not care less, did not wish me a happy birthday, and I was so annoyed. He kept saying, I'm four. I don't give a crap about that kid. It's my birthday, too. I'm four. Just wanted to pummel. That's a stupid kid. That is egocentrism. They don't care about anything else other than things. Like, if you ever talk to a little kid, and they don't, like, you ask them, how was your day? You know, how, what did you do? Do they ever ask you a question back? You're so <laughs> Ever give a person's presents either. They gave him like the best person's presents he's obsessed with, like balls and a little, and he goes, There'll be a huge like refrigerator box full of like those like bouncy balls or whatever, those big ones. He goes, That's it. <laughs> That's it. I'll remember that forever. I was like five. I was like, That's rude. <laughs> <laughs> Egocentrism is the inability to care about anything else other than that. Which is why they don't ask you questions which is why they genuinely don't say thank you, why they genuinely can't understand when they hurt your feelings. 
have they ever done something to you and you're like, that was so mean? And they're like, what? <laughs> and you're like, that was mean. And then you bite them back. Huh? <laughs> um, I'll tell you in the video because I need to make sure it's correct. All right. Uh, centration is your other big one. Centration is the tendency of young child to focus only on one feature at a time. Centration is the belief that whatever the kid is seeing <coughs> is what everyone is seeing. That everyone is experiencing their, fir their Thanksgiving like they are. That when they're cold, everyone's cold. When everyone, when they're hungry, everyone's hungry. Because everything about them, everything about what they're experiencing is the first time it's ever happened. Have you ever had a kid trip and fall near you? And you're like, the kid just kind of trips a little bit, and you're like, you're fine. And the kid's like, oh my god, I'm dying. And you're like, no, you'll be fine. That's centration. They can only focus on one major thing at a time, and it's all about them and their perspective. Conservation is one of the harder things they'll struggle with. Now, <clears throat> if you could imagine, I used to babysit when I was in high school. These two kids next door, Derek and Colin. And um, Derek was the older kid. He was nine, and Colin was seven. There was a two-year two year age difference. So they're part of the reason why I will never have children. <laughs> Just too much work. There's so much work. Anyway, um, so I used to go over there after school uh, when I was in soccer season and babysit them, and I used to do, like, Saturday nights and stuff like that. And their favorite thing they would only eat for like two years, because I babysat them for like four years, was hot dogs and <coughs> macaroni and cheese. That was the only thing they would eat. That's only so thing. It is so terrible, but in my heart I'm kind of like, because I love hot dogs and I love macaroni and cheese, so. Kraft. Not like real macaroni and cheese. That stuff's gross. Anyway. Okay. Conservation. So, if I gave, <clears throat> if I cooked a hot dog. Okay? And I gave Derek, who was the older kid, cut his in half, and I cut Collins, the younger brother, into quarters. Derek, the older brother, is going to be upset. Why is the older brother going to be upset? It looks like he has more. It looks like the younger brother has more. Okay? Conservation is the ability to understand that just because shape changes, it's still the same. Like, this is still the same amount of hot dog as this. It just happened to be cut into four. If you are struggling with conservation, you don't understand that you think this is more than this. Does that make sense? So during pre-operational, children are struggling with conservation. All right, you ready to, you ready to trick some kids? Yeah. Oh, irreversibility is they're unable to see things from a different angle. Like they can't redo something over again. If you ask a kid, hey, how did you, what did you just do? The kid's going to be like, oh. you literally just did it. What did you just do? Some high schoolers are the same way. <laughs> All right, here we go. Wait, what was the example you gave for centration? Centration, everything's all about them. Like, their first experiences, if they're sad, everyone's sad. Okay. Found it, not where he watched <coughs> us hide it. All right, so two to seven, Mickey, is this age range. Can you I look at these two glasses? Do you think that they have the same amount of juice? You think they have the same? Okay. Now we're going to pour this juice into this glass. Now, do you think that this glass has more juice, this glass has more juice, or do you think that they have the same amount? That one has more. This one has more, and why do you think that this one has more? Because the, it's taller. That's poor logic. Okay, you ready? Okay. Does this row have more quarters? Does this row have more quarters, or do they have the same? One, two, three, six. <coughs> one, two, three. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They're the same. They're the same? Five, five. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Does this row have more quarters? Does this row have more or do they have the same? 
This one has more. That one has more quarters? <laughs> Why does this row have more quarters? Because it's more like, more like, um, far away. It's far, it's more far away? Yeah. <laughs> it's like more far away than like that. It's like bigger. Bigger. <laughs> All right, we're going to play a game with the graham crackers, and we're going to share them between me and you, okay? Okay. Do you think that we shared those fairly? So, she has two full graham crackers no in front of her, and she has one. You share. You have those, and I have this. Well, what, about, what, what if we try this? Okay, can I put this down right there? Okay. Now is it fair? Yeah. Yeah, why is it? <laughs> so cute. Now, when people say stealing from a baby is wrong, stealing from a toddler is okay. These are idiots. Anyway, okay, these are all examples of what? Conservation. These are all examples of conservation. Shifting water shapes, uh, length of coins, even though she counts them the first time, doesn't count them the second time. What the hell? I have no idea. Okay, the graham crackers, how we have two, and then she breaks one in half, they have two. That's all conservation. Everyone's clear on what conservation is? Everyone's good? Okay. She is cute, though. It makes you feel kind of bad about eating extra graham crackers. Can you tell me what you see when you look at that from where you're sitting? What are some of the things that you see? Um, and a cat. A cat. And a tree and a bug. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. Can you tell me what you see when you look at it from that stool? Um, an owl. An owl? And him. What, what's, what is that? Um, a goat. A goat? Okay, is there anything else you see? Yeah, right there. Right there, what is that? Uh, a tree. A tree. And that's another little tree. Another little tree. <laughs> and can you tell me what I see when I look at this from where I'm sitting right here? An owl. Okay. And a goat. Mm -hmm. And a little tree. And that. And that. Okay, so what was that an example of? The first one. Egocentrism, yes, irreversibility is also could be part of it. They couldn't reverse his own thinking. The belief that what he was seeing was what she was seeing is egocentrism. Everyone good? Does that help? Okay. All right, so your next stage <coughs> is, uh, so you have sensory motor and then pre-operational, which has a lot. Then you have um, concrete operational. Is your third stage. Now, concrete operational is um, the capable of logical thinking process. This is when kids start being able to really process information for themselves and kind of in their heads figure out if it would work or not. It's basic logic, but logic nonetheless. Okay? Um, and this leads to a lot of. Uh, uh, I'll tell you after I show you the video. Okay, so, are we good? Okay, in this one, they master conservation. They master, in your second box over there, they master conservation, master irreversibility, master egocentrism. Okay, so they're mastering everything from the previous one that they were struggling with. This is why hanging out with like little kids from age seven and up is much better. They're not morons. Wait, what was that? They master all the things they were struggling in the second. From stage two, what was the age range? Uh, stage two is what? It's two to seven. All right, here we go. So here is concrete operational. So first we're going to look at these two cups right here. Do you think there's the same amount of juice in this glass as there is in that glass? There you go. There you go? Okay. So we're going to take 
the juice from this box and pour it into this one right here. Okay, so now we're going to look at this glass and that one. So do you think that there's more juice in this glass, more juice in this glass, or do you think that they have the same amount? Same amount. Okay, why do you think that they have the same amount? Just because this is skinny doesn't mean <coughs> it, it, it doesn't, it's not the same amount. It, it has the same amount of juice in it, but it this one is just wider and this one's skinnier. But they have the same amount of juice. Same logic. It says, if you hit a glass with a hammer, the glass will break. <laughs> and then this one says, Dawn hit a glass with a hammer. <laughs> so what happened to the glass? It broke. It broke. Why did it break? Because the hammer's hard. <laughs> if you hit a glass with a feather, the glass will break. No, it won't. <laughs> and this is the second rule. Don hit a glass with a feather. What happened to the glass? Nothing. Nothing happened? Why didn't anything happen? Because the feather was soft. Okay, so he's able to take what his experiences are with feathers, that they're soft, and he's able to say it wouldn't work. Have a good day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. <clears throat>